Mr. President, I have the opportunity to be able to speak to this body today about Amy Barrett. She's a nomination that's currently pending to be judge. Oh, that a circuit court judge. It's a pretty high standard for those individuals because they handle some incredibly difficult constitutional cases. What's good about this is that Amy Barrett meets the standard for those high qualifications. Professor Baird received her BA in English Literature, magna cum laude, from Rhodes College, her JD summa cum laude from Notre Dame University Law School, where she served as executive editor of the Notre Dame Law Review. She currently serves as a research professor of law at Notre Dame University Law School. Professor Baird teaches and researches in the areas of the federal courts, constitutional law, statutory interpretation. She's publishing scholarship in leading legal journals such as Columbia, Virginia, and the Texas Law Review. Those aren't easy areas to be able to publish for and an easy professorship to be able to land. Before joining the Notre Dame faculty, Professor Barry clerked for Justice Scalia, the Supreme Court of the United States, and for Judge Silberman of the U.S. Court of Appeals in the D.C. Circuit. Following her clerkship, her clerkship, she was an associate where she litigated constitutional, criminal, and commercial cases, both trial and appellate courts. Professor Barrett also served as a visiting associate professor at George Washington University Law School. She seems to be eminently qualified. Then what seems to be the issue? Interestingly enough, she's faced a very odd set of questions during her confirmation process. Questions not about her legal scholarship, not about her qualifications, but oddly enough, about her Catholic faith. Her, it wasn't about her temperament. It wasn't about her fairness. It wasn't about scholarship. It was whether her Catholic faith would get in the way of her being a good judge. Quite frankly, it wasn't about whether she had chosen a faith. It was the problem that she actually seemed to live her faith that became a big challenge during the questioning time period. It's odd for us as Americans because this seems to be an issue that we resolved 200 plus years ago. We resolved in Article 6 of the Constitution where it says there's no religious test for any officer of the United States. There's no evaluation to be a certain faith or if you have a certain faith, to take that faith off if you're going to be able to serve in the United States. We have in our Constitution a protection not of freedom of worship, which I hear some people say they're free to worship how they choose. That's not our constitutional protection. Our constitutional protection is the free exercise of, re of your religion. Not that just that you can have a faith, but you can both have a faith and live your faith according to your own principles. That's consistent with who we are as Americans, that we allow any individual to be able to have a faith and to be able to live their faith, both in their private life and in their public life, or to be able to have no faith at all if they choose to have no faith at all. That's up to the decision of each American. But we don't ask individuals, as has been asked of this individual, whether her faith will be the big issue and whether the faith becomes a question of whether you're capable to serve other fellow Americans. What's so dangerous, quite frankly, about her Catholic faith and her Christian beliefs, of her being a judge? Are people afraid that she'll actually live out what the book of Proverbs says? To speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, speak for the rights of all who are destitute, speak up and judge fairly, defend the rights of the poor and the needy? Is that when everyone's afraid that she'll actually live out that biblical principle? I'm a little confused why questions that would come out like dogma seems to live loud in you, which was asked of her during her questioning time in the committee, and other questions to be able to challenge her about her Catholic faith. Faith is a choice that each individual makes, and it's extremely personal, but also an extremely important choice. Some individuals in America, myself included, choose to look past the mundane day-to-day -day events and to think there is both someone and something higher and beyond us. We don't just look at the creation around us, we wonder about the creator who made it. We don't just wonder about cosmic dust smashing into each other, we ask the logical question. If cosmic dust were to smash into each other in space and create all that is, who made space? Who made the cosmic dust that smashed into each other? How did that happen? 
See, faith drives us to be able to ask harder questions and to be able to look a little bit longer at the things that other people just see as plain in front of them. We ask what's behind it. A lot of Americans do. It's not irrational. It's a part of who we are. It's a part of how we're made. It's a challenge to us as Americans to be able to challenge an individual and to say, that person is so radical that they believe in things like do not murder, do not steal, do not covet, honor your father and mother, or even things as radical as whatever you do, do unto others as they would have you do it unto you. It doesn't seem that radical of a belief that we would have to challenge and wonder if you're able to be a judge if you believe in those things. We dare to be able to believe in something beyond us. So do millions of other Americans. I really thought that our nation was past this, that our nation that speaks so much of diversity and of being open to other ideas is somehow closing to people of faith. People that say they want to demand that everyone's inclusive are afraid of people that have faith and live their faith. Why would that be? If we're going to be an open society, is it not open as well to people of faith? To be able to not only have a faith, but to live their faith. We hit a moment like this in the 1960s, and I thought we had moved past it. There was a senator at that time who was running to be president of the United States. We know him as John Kennedy. Senator Kennedy was speaking to a group of ministers in Houston, Texas in the 1960s, and he had to stand before them and explain his Catholic faith. Because quite frankly, there was this buzz. Could someone be a Catholic and be president? What would that be? Would you, would you have difficulties with that? Quite frankly, the questions that came up of Professor Barrett were strikingly similar to the questions that were asked of Senator Kennedy when he was running to be president of the United States. Here's how Senator Kennedy responded to that. He said, well, this year it may be a Catholic against whom the finger of suspicion is pointed in other years, and it may be someday again, a Jew or a Quaker or a Unitarian or a Baptist. It was Virginia's harassment of Baptist preachers, for example, that helped lead to Jefferson's statute of religious freedom. Today, I may be the victim, but tomorrow it may be you until the whole fabric of our harmonious society is ripped at a time of great national peril. And in fact, this is the kind of America for which our forefathers died. When they fled here to escape religious tests, oaths, and they did not, that in the, to escape religious test oaths that denied office to members of less favored churches when they fought for the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and the Virginia Statute of Religious Freedom, and when they fought at the shrine that, as JFK said that day, that he visited that day, the Alamo. For side by side with Bowie and Crockett died McCafferty, Bailey, and Carey, but no one knows whether they were Catholic or not, for there was no religious test at the Alamo. Then he made this closing statement. He said, if I should lose on the real issues, the presidential race, I shall return to my seat in the Senate, satisfied that I tried my best and was fairly judged. But if this election is decided on the basis that 40 million Americans lost their chance of being president on the day they were baptized, then it is the whole of the nation that is the loser in the eyes of Catholics, and non-Catholics around the world, in the eyes of history, and in the eyes of our own people. This should be a settled issue for us. Not a divisive one. We are a diverse nation. Diverse in backgrounds, perspectives, attitudes, and yes, diverse in faith. I look forward to supporting Professor Barrett in this position, and I look forward to seeing her decisions as they come out of that court, consistent with the law, as she is well-trained to be able to do, but are consistent with our convictions as Americans. With that, I yield the floor.